to bring new disciples in. But just like with anything, there's a cost to discipleship. If you're part of a family, we all know there's a cost to being part of a family. It's not one maybe that you pay in money, but it's one you pay probably in chores. Yeah, you remember those things? I remember them. Having to go out, I had to mow the lawn, I had to take care of the leaves in the fall. So it was part of what it was to be a part of the family. There was a cost to it. And I'm sure my parents, they too, had to always look at both sometimes the financial cost, as well as the cost of time, what it was to be that family. And to be a disciple means there is a cost. And we must be prepared for it. Because see, just like myself, when I went to Rome, I thought to myself, this would be easy. Two years, doesn't sound like a lot of time, really, in the grand scheme of everything. It'll be easy. And I said to myself, and plus, I'm lucky, I'm blessed. All my family, they live in France. And the rule just says you can't go back to America. So at least I could go spend Christmas with family in France, see my godmother. I'd be even closer to them. But you start to realize that there's a mental game as well in play of knowing that you can't go home. And it can become a challenge. And all of a sudden, the cost can start seeming quite high. And we have to be ready when we say our yes to Jesus for the cost that will come. Because we do not want to be like the builder who foolishly starts construction not knowing that, knowing that he doesn't have enough to finish everything that needs to be done. We want to make sure that we're ready for it. So what is that cost? Jesus Christ sets it up for us at the beginning of the gospel. And he does so using an extent some hyperbole, but also in reality. Are you willing to give up that which is most precious to you? Beginning of Mass, I ask you to think about that which is most precious to you, that which you would miss the most if you were on that one-way ticket to Mars. If Jesus Christ came to you today and said, I need that from you, are you ready to give it up for him? Is he going to be the number one of our lives? Or is there something that is worth more than Jesus Christ in our life. And it's a real challenge to us all, because many times we think family and then faith, not faith and then family. And if we were asked to give that up, if meaning coming to church meant that family would be angry at us, wouldn't want to talk to us anymore, if coming and following Jesus Christ meant that people would not want to be in our lives who we want to be in our lives, we're ready to follow and to give up that ultimate cost of discipleship. Now, I'm not saying that Jesus is going to call upon you to give up that cost right now. He's not saying that you have to do this in order to follow me. But you have to be ready for it. But yet, in his mercy and his love, so oftentimes as he shows to us, he's the one who's covered the fair share of the check. If we were going out to a dinner with Jesus Christ, we wouldn't have to be worried about even paying the tip. He'd say, no, you guys should pay the sales tax. It's even less than the tip on the tab. He's covered the majority of the costs, and oftentimes he is generous to us, and even lowers our share, even less so. I remember he blessed me even being in Rome and having to come back on a court order. I had to go and be a witness to a case, nothing that I did wrong. But I had to go and come back, and well, that superseded the the North American College's authority. And God gave me in that little gift. It was actually at my birthday that he had me have to come back and be here for this trial. And while the cir circumstances were quite sad, having to be a witness in a trial, it still was a great gift that God looked and said, you were ready to give it up. When I went to Rome, I didn't know that this was going to be happening, that I was going to have the opportunity to come back. You were ready to give up being at home, people that you knew and love, friends here. And I'll tell you, it was harder than I thought it was going to be. And he gave me the gift of being able to come back and to spend 12 days, because 
Trials tend to drag on, as you know. And to spend 12 days at home with family and friends and getting to spend my birthday here in the U.S. with people whom I love. The cost of discipleship, it is high. But yet, Jesus always seems to give us a rebate whenever we don't realize it's coming. But he asks us to see, are you ready to pay the cost? To be ready to go on that one-way mission. Because the one-way mission we're going to is not some red, dusty planet. It's rather the beautiful reward of heaven. And so if you're ready to pay that cost, you will see that the price tag is far beneath the value. The cost of discipleship is high, but the gift received of it is even greater.